Welcome, welcome. So happy you're here. She's all over the place. I have a special guest today. Her name is Sonia, and she is a specialist in the human design. So what happened was, not this past July, but the July before that, um, I went home and visited my family and my sister, Anna, who's a complete genius, Anna Chinakis, look her up. Um, she did my human design. Now, prior to that, uh, a couple people in the health and wellness community, you know, for a couple of years, they'd ask me, what's your human design? Do you know your human design? What's your human design? And it kept coming up, but then I wasn't able to pinpoint it and like look it up and do the research. And then thankfully, when I came home one July 4th, my sister knew her human design. She's a generator and she did my human design and I'm a projector. And she did my whole chart. She printed it out. She did the open spaces, you know, she color coded and everything. And, and I have it and she's just a genius and she's brilliant and I'm so excited. And then she turned me on to Jenna Zoe, who's a specialist in the human design. She's over in the UK, I believe. And so I followed her on Instagram. I went to New York and to Los Angeles and I was like, oh, I want to know more about the human design. And so I went online and I was looking for a specialist and I found Sonia. And at the time she was in Seattle. Now she's in Miami. She was just in Poland for one month visiting her family and, um, you know, full circle came around. She gave me a beautiful reading and I have the podcast and the human design is so important. And I feel like if more people know about the human design, we would understand ourselves, our relationships better. And even God willing, like when I have children one day, I want them to do their human design. And I'll understand on a fundamental level that instead of being an emotional being like, oh, why is it emotionally, why isn't my son or daughter doing this? Or emotionally, why isn't my mom or dad or my friend or my boyfriend or whoever doing this? Like, I'll be like, oh, that's not in their human design or they're this way, they're behaving this way because of their human design. So there's five types of human design and and I am so excited. With no further with no further ado, let's have Sonia on. Sonia, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be here and share more about this amazing tool that has really changed my life in many ways. So cool. And how long have you been involved in the human design? Uh, I think it's been a few years. It must have been like 2017, maybe beginning of 2018, that I found out about it. And, you know, first I just wanted to learn about my design. I'm a manifesting generator. And, you know, throughout my whole life, um, I judged myself for changing directions mm -hmm. and for kind of, you know, um, I, fe I felt like I, I was so disconnected from myself when I was younger. I didn't even know what my desires were. So I just like kind of went along with whatever my family wanted for me or whatever would please others mm -hmm. and so but then like I when I couldn't do it anymore when I for example my my grandparents really wanted me to be a doctor and I was pre-med in college um, and actually worked in science research and immunology research after college but like at some point, like I couldn't lie to myself that I didn't want to do it. And then I kind of left that behind and I went on to business school, which was another thing that I thought, <laughs> thought that it would be, you know, I, I mean, in a way I followed my excitement. Living in New York at that time was exciting to me. So I fo followed my excitement there and, and went to business school. But anyway, so there were, yeah. So, so you were educated in New York at, uh, for both, um, um, so I was in Boston for college and then in New York for graduate school. Um, mm -hmm. cool. And, you know, while I was in business school, I found Kundalini Yoga and meditation and started doing that and eventually did my teacher training, started getting more into personal growth. Um, but yeah, like I just, I have always had like so many interests and I thought it was a bad thing that I couldn't pick just one. I used to really judge myself that I didn't have this linear path, but then I, yeah. you know, when I learned about what being a manifesting generator, generator is like, it's, you know, you're supposed to be all over the place in a, in a good way. <laughs> I know. I know. It's like perfect. <laughs> yeah. So where were you uh, born? I was born in Poland. Um, so my family and I won our green cards when I was very young when I was three or four. So we came to the US like, you know, for a few weeks 
once a year to, to kind of keep our green cards. Yeah. Um, and then when I was 16, my mom decided, you know, she kind of wanted to start over and move to the U.S. So, so my mom is here and my dad is still in Poland. Um, so yeah, I've been here since I was 16. So a long time. <laughs> Yeah. And then um, you mentioned Kundalini. So I've been doing Kundalini since I was eight years old before I even knew oh. the word Kundalini. I was just in touch with the universe and in spirit and inspired. And um, I just had all this space. And every time I got out of a long, hot shower, I would always just sit with myself for about 45 minutes and I would just calm all my neurotransmitters. And I would just do these things like this. I would just from the heart, what you do in Kundalini like mm. this, I would stir up all the stuff in the heart through deep breathing. And then I would just, you know, I would do different things that you do and that you learn in Kundalini. So I went to the Golden Bridge in New York and in LA. Did you go to the Golden Bridge in New York as well? Yeah, that's where I did my teacher training, actually. <laughs> oh, you did a teacher training. How cool. Yeah, yeah. And so I taught. Um, but yeah, my teacher training was at Golden Bridge. And then I taught in New York and in Seattle for a bit. Um, what I'm did not, you teach in New York? Um, so in New York, I taught kind of around different buildings like in you know gyms within buildings and then in Seattle um at this place that was like a gyro gyro place you know like the different forms of movement anyway it's called the Seattle changing room mm -hmm. um and then I did some lives on Instagram teaching so actually those those are still up on IGTV so if anyone cool. wants to check those out um, but yes, um, who knows, maybe I'll start teaching in Miami soon. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, and online and, uh, right. right. With the way the world is right now. And, uh, right. for those who don't know about Kundalini, Kundalini is all about, uh, raising the vibration of the energy. So let's say if you're drinking or something like that, your, your, your vibes get very low, but like if you're around, if you're at Disneyland or if you're around other people who are high in spirits and high in energy, your Kundalini rises, you know, and it's important to keep your Kundalini high. And I'm a high energetic person. So sometimes with my Kundalini, I get so high that I need to root with my feet in the sand or in the water. I'm a water sign. I need to hug a tree, you know, to be more mm. grounded because Kundalini can get you so high that you have to be able to have that balance of, of grounding that Kundalini as well, your energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, really what appealed to me, I, I didn't even like yoga before I found Kundalini, but to me, it was really nice because I felt like other forms of yoga can be like very performance-like, you know, yeah. like you're comparing yourself to others and I wasn't that flexible. And Kundalini, you know, you do it with your eyes closed. It's a very internal experience. It's a very spiritual experience. It's very deep. So anyway, that's, um, that's just my, <laughs> my plug for Kundalini. Yeah. And it couples with, um, you know, Tibetan meditation and really getting to the deep rooted space of the mind to silence mm -hmm. the mind and, and heal that way as well. Yeah. Those other poses, you're like looking over to the left, but all our bodies are different. So it's not right. like it, my leg isn't doing what that person legs is doing and my arms don't go that far down. And it's like, we all have our different bodies. So speaking exactly. of bodies, let's talk about uh, the human design. So as I mentioned, there's five different types of human design. And what's your mission statement? What is the human design for you? So to me, it's really creating unity in the world through the realization that we're all so different and different things work for different people. So we were taught that there's this one way to success and that you have to kind of be, you know, hustle and go get what you want and make it happen. Um, but, you know, that doesn't work for everyone. And, and there are, so the five energy types that you mentioned, that's just an entry point um, into human design. That's like the first thing. So the energy type is really about how you're exchanging energy with the world and with other people. And it's really about using the energy you have so that you can optimize, um, you know, how you use your energy and have more of it ultimately um, and use it in a, in a correct way. So you experience more flow. So you, you know, the right opportunities come to you. Um, and really, you know, it's the first thing you learn in your human design, but it's, it's the thing that um, creates the biggest shift. 
Um, so yeah, anyway, so, so basically just realizing that we all function so deep, uh, differently and it's okay. You know, some people are meant to be more selfish and, you know, focused on themselves and some others find their worth through helping others and that's okay. And we don't have to like make the other, um, way wrong, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And when so. we're, and when we're misaligned with our, uh, human design, we're wasting a lot of energy and the energy that you can't see, but it's felt and we waste a lot of it. So now knowing my human design, um, you know, it's a practice because I can look back and I can be like, Oh my God, so many times I was just exuding and wasting so much energy. And then I would feel so unfulfilled and I'd be so upset and I'd be like, why is it going like this? And it's like, oh, because with my human design, I understand, like, I don't need to go banging on everyone's doors because I'm going to go get her and I'll just go knock on everyone's doors. And I would like put myself out there, go, go, go. But as, you know, a part of, and we'll get into it, of my human design is, you know, it's the gift of the invitation and people come to me. So when the opportunity is presented to me, then I can share because I would share all of this, all these things. I would like send 200 emails or like a blast call and like let all these people know things. And it's like, blah, blah. And like people aren't wanting to know those things. But if, it, if I can just sit still and be present with the gifts that I have and when someone and they do come to me and now I have the space because I'm not blah, blahing all the time, more people are actually coming to me with the invitation and I'm able to give value and insight because I can align with those people who actually need it, want to receive it and they're open because they're asking me for it. But I mean, it was just so draining, like. And then even after knowing my human design, I caught myself in the pattern of still going out there and doing the old things. However, since I knew about it, I could rein it in and be like, "Uh oh, you're doing it and like be more mindful. And so it's a practice of being mindful and shifting, shifting into the vibration of like being uh, tuned to my human design. So that's another reason why I'm really excited to connect with you today because we can get more in depth again. And so it's not just like a one-off kind of thing. It's like you can do it and then maybe check back in with you every six months or something to say, mm -hmm. hey, this has been working, this hasn't been working and like share it with our community so it becomes a language that's, you know, full force for everyone, right? Mm. Exactly. And so that's why I'm also like, now I don't want to just do readings. I want to offer support after the reading. You know, I, I do it over an app called Boxer, but I think that that implementation um, part is really important because, you know, you learn all this, but then it's like, yeah, you really have to live it every day. And we're always going to, you know, fall off and, um, you know, we're going to listen to the conditioning of the world and how the world tells, tells us we need to be. So, so, but we can always redirect and the universe will help us with some telltale t signs, which is different for each type. Um, you know, when, so for example, for projectors, which you are, um, you'll experience bitterness um, when you're not living according to your energy type. For me, as a manifesting generator, it's frustration. So, and it's like an energetic kind of um, frustration or bitterness. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so um, where was I going with this? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just get so excited, but, but yeah. obviously, yeah, I mean the world, you know, the messaging is so strong that we're always gonna um, kind of veer off our path and, and that's okay. Um, Cause there are things to learn there too. Okay, cool. So jumping in, let's identify the five different types of the human design for the viewers. Okay. So the five uh, energy types are, projectors, which you are, um, which are about 20% of the population. Um, then there's manifestors who are about 10% of the population. Um, so, and then there are ma manifesting generators. So there are about 35% and generators uh, about 35%. So manifesting generators are kind of like a combination of a manifestor and a generator. And lastly, we have reflectors um, that are about 1% of the population. And so they're like the unicorns. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My um, sister's a generator. Uh, my partner, um, he's a manifestor generator. And mm -hmm. I'm a projector. And uh, Jenna Zoe's a projector. Um, yeah, Shaman exactly. Durek. Do you know Shaman Durek? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. <laughs> he's the homie. Yeah, he has Ancient Wisdom podcast. Um, he's a projector as well. Uh, I'm a Scorpio. He's a Scorpio. Um, but yeah, he's a projector. And uh, what are you? 
I'm a manifesting generator. Manifesting generator. Okay, cool. So like you're the kind of person who does what you do, which you can explain, and then you bring the opportunity to me and I make it happen, right? Um, so it's a bit different. So like projectors are here to be guides. They're here to see and not do. So you're meant to kind of offer the world, like you see a certain system or um, like a niche really well or several systems or niches. And you're meant to bring efficiency to, um, to how the rest of the world um, does things. So for example, you're kind of like the bird in a tree and you're observing everything going on on the ground, like all, that, all, the, all of us other, other types um, are kind of on the ground doing things. And you're like, oh, I can see you could do this more efficiently. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's basically projectors. But they only came in to the world in the 18th century when people started living longer. So before projectors came in, um, you know, it was really the manifestors that were the kings and queens. And if you weren't a manifestor, you were kind of suppressed. <laughs> so, you know, so then once, um, once people, once projectors came in, people are now more able to, to do what they want to do and really create a life, um, you know, focus on what kind of life they want to create and create the life of their dreams. So, um, so yeah. Um, Elizabeth Taylor is a projector. Steven Spielberg is uh -huh. a projector. Who else is a projector? Um, I think Obama. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, yeah, I forget. But yeah, a lot of like coaches as well because projectors have a very penetrating aura. So you can see deeply into people. Um, so. And so everyone can Google the human design and read more about it. You can right. look up the five types Sonia just mentioned. There's actually blogs and forums. So you can read about different couples um, who are like MGs, manifestor mm -hmm. generators and like projectors and how they complement each other and, you know, how they create space for one another. And there's questions you can ask and things like that. And you can reach out to Sonia. Um, she has a website. She has a, um, an Instagram. I'll put those in the show notes. And then at the end of the show or now you can, um, you know, share that with the listeners as well of how they can reach you directly and get in touch. Sure, sure. So on Instagram, I'm at Sonia, S-O-N-I-A, uh, Petetska, P-E-T-E-C-K-A. And my website is soniapetetska.com. So S-O-N-I-A-P-E-T-E-C-K-A.com. So, um, so yeah, find me. Uh, definitely, I post a lot of content related to human design and personal growth. So, um, so yeah, and definitely reach out to me if, if you have any questions or doubts. And then every single projector is different. They're not all the same. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, that's, as I mentioned, the energy type is just the first thing in your chart, but there are so many others. So, so also there are even def different kind of projectors. So you're a classic projector, um, which means you, you really see very objectively and you can pivot pretty fast. Oh, yeah. Um, Quick. So, um, so yeah, and so that's, you know, that's the first layer. Then the second thing that's really important to know about your chart, and we haven't even covered, you know, the whole projector thing, but we can get back to it. Um, so the second thing that's the second most important thing to know about your chart is your authority. So that's how you make decisions, the right decisions for you. So for you, that's splenic. So your spleen um, talks to you. It's kind of like a sixth sense. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's like a quick intuitive hit. Um, so the spleen is all about like instinct, like a survival instinct. So it's really, you know, and human design really ultimately what it teaches us is that the intuition lives in the body and how we're supposed to make decisions is by listening to the wisdom of the body instead of, you know, letting um, ourselves make decisions with our minds because we love to overanalyze and mm -hmm. use logic and all that. But the mind according to human design, is designed to be turned outward, to process the world. Um, but we force it to, to turn inward and kind of predict things and make decisions, which is not, which is actually can limit us because the mind can only come up with so many, you know, uh, possibilities. But, yeah. 
but it's well, really Dr. Joe Dispenza says we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts per day. 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts and most of them are negative. So it can come up with that many. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> seems like a lot, but actually it's not, especially if the thoughts, some of the thoughts are the same thoughts. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's really about being present in the body and especially for splenic authority, you have to catch it because it only speaks once in the moment. So you want to like strengthen the muscle, like write down what your spleen is telling you. And And it kind of, how do you know? How do you know? Like, you know what you know, but what if you think you know, or what if you don't know, or what if you're confused on it? How can you get in touch to be like, yo, is that my splenic speaking (laughs) or what? Right, right. Uh, Well, it's, it's a practice as with everything, you know, you want to like, just, um, you know, practice like writing down what your spleen is telling you, but, you know, knowing that the spleen has, um, the spleen is where like the instinct lives, but also kind of the fears and anxieties. So, but the spleen is all about survival. So it's like, you know, um, it leads you to what is right for you in terms of like what is healthy, um, what is correct, what is safe. So it's kind of like a sixth sense, like, um, you know, you just get like a feeling. And where, and where, do you, where would you get the feeling? Here, here, down here? Like, where is that feeling, do you think? So um, I don't, um, because I, I'm not a splenic authority. So, you know, it's different for every person. Um, but it's not, it's not like directly in the spleen like in the body in the spleen because Mm -hmm. it's just an energetic center right got it um so so yeah i I guess it's like a um just like an intuitive hit um for me well i have because also i'm sacral authority so i'm like the gut the gut tells me it's all about excitement and um creativity and desire but i also have a defined spleen so like the spleen will tell me something, but you know, my sacral always has the final say. Yeah. So it's also like all about the different things um, going on in your chart. Like for you, it's, it's just the spleen. It's just the sixth sense. It's like kind of the first thing that, um, that you feel like, you know, when you make, when you need to make a decision. So you want to follow that because yeah, it, it also, it yeah. It just knows. Yeah, it just knows. Like and it hits me, it's like that's the thing. Yeah. Because yeah. I get like a I get rush hits, right? I get uh-huh. I get I definitely get rush hits. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and it changes very quickly, like, you know. Um, so so you want to act on it when it um and yeah. you know, it's a practice to not like overanalyze and doubt it and be like, Oh, I really should like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't have to make sense. That's why, you know, our body can in business, um, in yeah. business, I don't think twice. It's like I, I get the hit okay. and I know. But in personal, I'll get the hit, but then I'll question myself like, wait, was, was that a hit? And then I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for another hit to tell me that it was the same thing, but then it's not there and it tells me something else. So then I'll get confused and then I feel like I'm mm. being indecisive and then going around in circles and then like in limbo. So so yeah, in, 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 in work and things that like I'm non-attached to emotionally, it's really like, like I'm very data analytical and just yes or no to the point. But when it's emotional, I guess when your heart and your mind gets involved, then it becomes sometimes um, confusing for me Mm. or more difficult for me to swim in those big waters. Yeah. And I mean, that's also part of the deconditioning process to like, um, to like be able to trust it that, you know, oh, this does, that's, this might not make sense, but I'm going to follow it, you know, because, because as I said, we, we give so much importance to the mind and things having to um, fit into some narrative. So. Yeah. And the mind's just a tool. It's just a tool, just like our hand. So it, it's not emotional. It doesn't care either which way. It's just a, it's just a tool. We, we direct and tell it where, where to go and what to focus on. And it listens, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, but, um, so do you want to talk more about like projector stuff stuff, or do you want to like keep going with your chart? Cause it seems like, you know, a lot about, you know, living as a projector, um, but I can dive well, into for me, things. Yeah, a more. But for the viewers, I want them to know and, and dive deep sure, as well, sure. you know? So I think, um, yeah, let's just stick on. So we're not all over the place, <laughs> get all over the place, but let's just stick on this projector. Let's just go through my chart in detail. Sure. And then after we do that, we can, um, dabble in the other areas you know yeah sure so we talked a little bit about how they're kind of here to make things more efficient um you know they're non-energy beings so your projectors are not meant to add to the energy pool of the world as i said they're they're here to see they see things that others can't and are meant to guide the rest of the world so they're kind of the ceos of the future who you know because in the future world, everyone's doing what, you know, what they're good at, what they're excited about. Everyone can kind of um, create goals for themselves and are kind of, everyone's kind of more self-motivated. So it's not like the projectors, like in the old world, it was the manifestors who kind of like micromanaged people, um, but that's not needed anymore. Um, and projectors are here, the CEOs, the new CEOs with the doors open that are available for guidance, but are not, you know, actively managing people uh, all the I time. I personally so. love this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I, mean, I don't know. I'm like, I'm really fascinated by uh, projectors, but basically as you mentioned this, that, um, you know, as a kid or even before, maybe you just want to offer what you see and you want to guide others. Um, but it, when you offer that guidance without being invited, even energetically invited, because it's not really about an invitation in the mail, it's just about someone else recognizing you um, for your wisdom. Um, so it's like if you if you offer your wisdom without the other person recognizing you, it'll, it's kind of like hitting a ball against the wall. You'll get like pushback or, you know, encounter resistance or you'll be like viewed as like pushy or bossy so yeah yeah so that's yeah yeah pushy or bossy and it's like mm -hmm. i i knew grow, reflecting since i know what i know now growing up i've been to so many parties and events and places and it's just like i just felt invisible i felt like not wanted i felt so small i felt so awkward and so uncomfortable but then um through my life of leaving where i grew up my whole thing was like, and this is before I even knew the human design, I would only go to places where I was invited because I knew when I was invited somewhere, I would be VIP, no waiting in line, the best seats, the best food, like everything taken care of. Like, like, like I'm an Angelina Jolie, like gem star, like the, the it girl. Right. So I would only go to places where I was invited. And when I went to places I was invited, I would take, I remember one time it was the opening of the Tropicana in, in Hollywood. It was the opening at the Roosevelt. It was like the pool party and like area it was the opening. And it was Nick Montalegro's birthday. And he was like hosting the whole event. And I remember I took, I literally took Dr. Tom. I talked, I took like so many different people. And Dr. Tom's an amazing chiropractor. He's the chiropractor for like Russell Crowe, Leonardo DiCaprio, Christina Aguilera. He's amazing. He does home calls. He's in West Hollywood. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Tom, you gotta, you gotta go see him. Pain Relief Center. Anyway, so like, it was like, Dr. Tom, you know, it was like me and like 18 friends and it was like this red carpet and I just got done doing a shoot, a test shoot with Dior that day. And um, I had Dior like written like all over me and um, I was like on the red carpet and there were all these paparazzi taking photos and I, I, sh I showed up with like a harem of like 18 people and it's like, I was like the star of the party because I was invited and there was like this huge long line, but it was just like, I was like right there, boom. And so every single event that I've been to like around the world, private dinners, whatever, it's like, I always go where I'm invited because then, you know, you're going to be treated nicely. And maybe I got that experience from being such a kid mm -hmm. showing up at places, like wanting to like show up knocking on the door and like, I'm not invited or it's like, I'm having to like weasel my way in or whatever. So it was like, so I got all those, all those feelings out of the way. And I made a choice to only go to places where I feel invited because then I have that warm feeling of the projector of, you mm. know, showing up for the invitation. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, because 
you're a non-energy being, you want to conserve your energy till pe- and wait for people to ask you. And when they do invite you to share your wisdom, they're more willing to implement it and, you know, will come back and, and want to work with you again. Um, so it's really, you know, about working with whoever sees you clearly, whoever recognizes you, whoever knows that you have wisdom to share because they have to have space. And I didn't talk about this, but you know, the energy type is all about your aura. So the three feet around you. So it's getting your aura clear and clean of all the conditioning that you picked up, you know, of how you're supposed to be. Um, So it's clearing your aura of all that messaging that's, you know, not aligned with your design so that, you know, more of the things that are right for you can come in and drop into your aura. So, so basically it's like the person, the other person has to have space in their aura to receive your wisdom. Um, And, you know, it's not, not to say that, you know, projectors need to be passive in any way. You don't have to just wait around and, for the invitation, but, but you first work on recognizing yourself um, and, and also curating the skills you have. So, so each projector has a thing that they see really clearly. So, you know, um, so it's, it's like asking yourself, what am I good at? And actually a lot of projectors can't see themselves really clearly. So you might need to get some feedback from the outside world. What, you know, what you, um what people think you're good at and what like but just thinking about what comes really easily to you um and valuing what comes easily because you know we we were taught that it has to be hard and we have to struggle but that's that's the old world of way of doing things um so it's really yeah yeah and if one doesn't know it's like just kind of reflect or take a note for 30 days or 60 days what do people come to you for? What do they come right. to you for? Do they come to you for tech stuff, for beauty, for like help with this? Like what are people coming to you for? And then then like capitalize on that because people value you as a trusted source for that specific thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, while you're waiting for your invitations, like you you put yourself out there. I mean, you can create a website, create your art, whatever it is, cultivate what you're good at lean into your gifts um and then people start to pick up on your aura like you are energetically communicating that you are a guide and that you're here to help innovate and you know and um and people will pick up on that everywhere so and they'll you know they'll energetically come to you so um, so yeah, and you know, projectors are are meant to accomplish a lot, but in a very different way. They're only really meant to work, work like a few hours a day, and then spend the rest of the time learning, curating, and you know, on their internal process. You know, and if you don't, if you do too much in terms of work, like you know, because projectors want to keep up with the rest of the world and do, do, do. But um, if you do too much, you don't have the space for that curation process. So. So you're, yeah. Two things. One, I want to circle back around with um, what you said about like your aura outside of your human body. So we have 12 main chakras, seven main chakras inside the body. So the eighth and ninth chakra is your aura. So what would you suggest to the viewers? How can they cleanse their aura? What are some things you do and that you share with people of how they can do a daily ritual practice to make sure their aura is clear and clean so we can be open for that abundance of energy to connect with? Right. Well, that will also depend on your chart, obviously. So in human design, um, some of, you know, it's, it, it also includes the chakra system, but there are nine energy centers in, in your, um, in your chart. So it's a bit different. It's kind of like aligned with the chakras and on the bottom and on the top, but anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously like it depends on which centers you have filled in and which you don't. So for example, for you, you're what's called an open emotional. So through, through any centers that you have open, you're amplifying your environment. So for example, for you, the emotional center is open, which means you'll 
pick up on the emotions of others and you'll feel them more strongly than others. So, you know, if someone's like sad on like a two out of 10 scale, just a little sad, you might feel like so sad in their presence, you know, like, I don't know, eight out of 10. Yeah. So it's, you know, so that's just one example. That's the emotional center. So it all depends like which centers are open and which are defined. So the ones that are defined, you kind of have your own definition. So you have kind of a consistent energy there. And the open ones, you're kind of more susceptible to things coming in and you're amplifying them. Um, so, so for each different energy center, you know, there's like different deconditioning, for example, for the, um, or the, how to empty out, basically, how to empty out um, the, you know, the things that you pick up. So for example, for the emotional um, center, you, you know, you want to like, if it gets too, too intense to be around people, you want to remove yourself and come back to your kind of cool, calm and collected um, state. Um, mm -hmm. So for, so yeah, so that's one way. Uh, so you have to like look at your chart in terms of that. Um, so but you know, thing, yeah. One thing I found along the way, because, um, mm -hmm. okay, two things. One, you said, oh, like if someone's sad or happy at a two, I'll take it to like a six or an eight. And like, then everyone's meeting in a circle and then everyone goes in different ways. And I'm still like at, a, at like an eight. So I found like for me to cleanse that energy that I, because I'm open and to cleanse that energy, I'll go into a bathroom or even if I'm in an event, an event or something, I'll go into a bathroom, I'll run cool water on my wrist or I'll mm. take cool water and put it on my face or my neck. And I found that helps um, disperse mm. the energy. Also, um, I, I, I find like a, a couple times a week, like I need to sleep alone because if, mm -hmm. if, if I'm open, I'm picking up on other people's energies. So like wherever I'm at, I need to like shut the door, be in my own room. Like you said, my own cocoon. Um, it's been a lot going on with family and what's happening in the world. I had a day of solitude just yesterday and literally like, I just, I, I was listening to chapters in the Bible and I just like, um, I wrote an article on Thrive Global and I just, besides that, I just stayed off electronics and I was just like, just being with my own thoughts and just kind of detoxing. I did um, a, a, an emotional fast, a psychological fast and um, a, a fasting of food. I didn't, I just had water. I didn't eat anything just to, just to fast and to detox. And, and so um, those are some things that have that helped me, um, you know, with, with like, taking the energies off and out and just being able to like recenter myself. Um, the other thing is because I'm so like deeply emotional, I'm Scorpio, I'm a water sign. Um, some, and so some people, healers and people will look at that as like being an empath. So would you look at, at that as being an empath as well? Yeah, I mean, so there are like many layers. Obviously, obviously projectors are in general a little more sensitive than maybe some other types, but each, you know, each design or each chart has a potential for empathy just through different centers, but definitely the emotional center, having an open emotional center definitely makes you um, more sensitive to the emotions of others. So, um, so yeah, but there are other centers, um, you know, wherever you're open, you're definitely feeling others more. So, um, so for example, like, you know, you have an open sacral. So if we were together, I have a defined sacral as a manifesting generator. So you know, you could kind of ride or you can ride the energy of other generators because all generators have their sacral defined. So, so you can kind of, you know, taste that, that, um, that kind of desire, creative energy of other people. So sometimes like, you know, if you're lacking energy as a projector, you, you want to um, be around people with a defined sacral and, and ride their energy. So it's really, um, it's really interesting how that happens. But also, um, it's interesting that you talk about your fast because so the arrows on top of your chart um, tell you different things. But the top left arrow 
for you as um, is pointing right, which means you're not consistent. So you're actually better off without a routine, oh. um, just like going with the flow, which also means that you can fast. You don't need, you know, like consistent food. Um, so it's like, because for people who are consistent, their brain is kind of like more on all the time and producing stuff so they like need consistent fuel but you as a projector and as an inconsistent like fasting actually works for you but that's actually that's another thing like you know in the health circles it might be like people might be saying oh yeah intermittent fasting is is great for everyone but actually it's not really great for consistent people or for example for manifesting generators you know um you know they have the biggest engine so they they need more, more food oh my god um, yeah so like it's like Scorpio, he eats so much it's not even funny he'll eat like a plate and then like another plate and then like he'll have my my leftovers he, just, <laughs> he eats so much um yeah so so but in general like um you know projectors are meant to kind of eat more like birds which we talked about, like small portions throughout the day, kind of like grazing and, mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of like carbs. So like fruit and grains instead of, instead of like fat and protein kind of. So that's like, an, you know, it, human design can also help you figure out how to eat better for your type so that you're not, you know, as a projector, you're not overloading your system and kind of weighing it down. Um, you know, yeah. since you're more sensitive, you might might want to keep things simple. And there's even another layer, which is which tells you about your digestion. So for you, for example, you you do well with cold food or like food below your body temperature. Um, so that's something to think about. Okay. Um, yeah, because I'm always like I'm always um bloated, and I just okay. don't know why. Like I'm I'm like literally always bloated interesting so so yeah i mean i don't know if um i just did my viome are you familiar with viome i've heard of it but oh i don't God. know much about it <laughs> viome check it out um jay shetty okay. talks about it on his podcast he has uh Naveem, the creator of it he's already a multi-billionaire he didn't do it for the money he did it for the the health and nutrition of other people but there are um biologists who are in Africa who collect the fecal matter of the people there of like certain tribes because it's like what are they eating because they're like supermodel and ripped and anyway <laughs> so they basically they you know they take they look at your microbiome so I'm actually my sister got it for me for my birthday and I'm getting my test results in the next two weeks but um so it'll specifically tell you like what to eat what not to eat um before the pandemic I did my second intermittent fasting and then during the pandemic um the creator of the zero app said he's well he went to a farm with his family for two years because of the coronavirus and um, with non-perishable foods and he was saying um like actually it's not good to do the intermittent fasting during the coronavirus because when you're doing the intermittent fasting your immune system goes right below the breaking point and so with the virus maybe it's not a very good thing to be doing so actually I did it for 27 days and then I stopped however all the bloating went away like my tummy was like a 16 18 year old it was just flat it was like mm -hmm. so tight and flat and so so I know the bloating can go away and obviously it's from the foods but um, I was eating still like plant-based and like mindful with certain things. So I'm, I'm excited to get the, the Viome results back soon. And also from Jay Shetty's podcast, um, you can get a 10% off on the Viome thing. So if anyone's interested in that, I want to circle back around really quick um, mm -hmm. on the emotional part, because I'm, I'm diving deeper into emotions of vulnerability and mental health. Um, mm -hmm. I, and just like understanding us as human beings. Um, I just feel like I put up this wall in this shield and this like positive attitude of like, everything's perfect and like positive Katie and like positive everything. So I wouldn't allow my emotions to show because I wasn't taught how being vulnerable, being vulnerable and showing your emotions was a, a strength, right? Brene Brown. And like, obviously, obviously now we know how 
the power of vulnerability and I've been taught that along my journey thus far. But I was going around with this armor on and not showing that part of me when my human design is feeling so much more than other people, whether it be good, bad, up or down. So now that I understand or I'm understanding myself and my human design, I'm allowing myself to be more vulnerable and I'm allowing myself to feel sad if I'm sad and feel happy if I'm happy. And like some people will be like, oh, like uh, manic depressive or bipolar, or they're like, they want to label you and say all these different things like, oh, empath or like, or like grow up. You need to be more mature. You're acting like a kid. And it's like, oh, what's wrong with being in spirit inspired with the Lord and, and, and being like knowing yourself and being connected to your spirit. So for everyone listening out there, cause everyone's telling you like, Sonia said earlier, everyone's telling you like how you should be, how you should act or being a people pleaser for other people. It's just like, you know, well, just be sensitive to yourself. And if you're one of the ones who feel more or feel less, like it's okay. And we put up these shields and we want to like hide it. We want to isolate. We want to hide. And I'm here to let you know, like, it's okay to let the armor down and it's going to be an ocean wave of emotions. Cause it's going to be so uncontrollable because you're going to allow it to like come out and just allow it to just be messy and more than ever, just allow it to be messy, allow it to come out. Like, you know what I mean? It's okay. And, and another thing I learned about grieving and, you know, um, a lot of us are taught to like close the door, cry, grieve alone and cry alone, go to your room, cry. And it's like, it's okay to go to your room and cry alone, but it's okay also to cry and hold someone and cry with them and let them be in partnership with you. And Sonia spending time with us right now. I'm so thankful for you, Sonia. Thank you so much because we're spending time right now and we're ironing all these things out. And it's, and it's not just like a one-off it's a, it's a remembrance and it's a practice. And it's like, it's, it's, a, it's acknowledgement to show up to the mat. It's an acknowledgement to show up for each other and for ourselves and to say, it's okay. And maybe I don't know. And maybe this time it'll be different. And then, you know, it, it, it's a dance. So we're learning and it's a process and it's energy and it's always in motion, energy in motion. And we're learning and we're sharing and we're, we're growing as, as all of this happens together. So I just wanted to like touch on that vulnerability about that emotional part of like keeping it hidden and being scared to letting it come out and 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 it's going to be so awkward at first and then and then sensitive and all the other emotions so it's like i'm on the exploration of of sitting with it and people look at me of who i know they look at me and they're like questioning and i'm just like no need to explain it's better not to say anything because their inner critic is just ready to say something right back so it's it's best just not even to explain because we're still figuring it out for ourselves and so knowing a safe person to speak with Sonia, knowing a safe person to speak with who will understand and allow for that to happen is an honorable thing. So just kind of food for thought, reflect on those kind of things. Let's all take a deep breath before moving on to the next thing Sonia is going to talk about. <laughs> but thank you for allowing me to say that because that's really strong and a lot along my path right now and encouraging other people to empower themselves in those in those moments mm, no that was beautiful and thank you for that and it's it's so powerful when we can find someone you know a coach or or a friend or but you know a coach is kind of more objective in a way when they're they can be non-judgmental and we can just you know, and especially as women, because expressing our emotions and how we feel is such a big feminine value. Um, when we can just express how we feel and not fear that judgment. And even if it's, you know, um, not pretty or whatever, like when we can just put it out there and not be afraid of judgment, that's like the most liberating thing. And just knowing that we can express like the whole range of emotions because you know if you if you block the lower ones you're blocking the higher ones you know and you know and you just keep yourself at the spectrum of like i'm okay i'm fine <laughs> you know at this like very narrow range and and also and not i you know as an open emotional um not i over identifying yourself with your emotions because you're picking up so much from your environment you know, an open emotional because people who, who amplify emotions of others, they can feel more out of control emotionally. 
and knowing that that's okay it's just information about what's going on around us and you know i sometimes feel you know on days that are very charged for you know the whole world like i feel it and and that's okay and it's not there's nothing wrong with um, it's when you get attached to it and you're like, oh, what's wrong with me that I'm feeling so much? That's when you kind of are not allowing yourself to just like flow through you. And, you know, so just let, I mean, that's like a lesson I learn every day to let it be okay, however you're feeling and, you know, not making yeah. it such a big deal. So, and not hiding from people. Cause I know before for me, it was like, very draining to be around people which I think was also because I was just not being authentic <laughs> I just was you know kind of acting as someone that I thought I should be so that was exhausting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also like being exhausted by like picking up so much you know you don't yeah obviously you want to take time alone and to empty out but not um not to hide but yeah we got um this is cool <laughs> yeah yeah and, um, and I think we got to talk about it Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then I feel like during this pandemic has been amazing because what you said earlier, it's like, I was always like keeping up with the events, keeping up with the dinners, keeping up with the people, just like going to places all over the place. And it was just like so exhausting, like keeping up with it all. So it's like, it all came like, like the whole grids of the world are like crack the stuff, all the illusion, all the things of keeping up are like coming crashing down to get back to a, like a balance and to like a root state. And so for me, it was like all this armor was just like all these things came. It's like took so much pressure off because like there's a word for it. I forget. It's like um there it's an extrovert and an introvert and it's an ambervert or something. So I'm both. I'm an extrovert and an introvert. And it's an ambervert, I, I think. Um, but it's like so all the extroverted stuff was just like. Oh, and I've mm. actually been able to focus and get so much more done effectively, like you were saying earlier, because I'm not trying to like, keep up with everything in, in the world. And I've just been able to like really kind of refocus and recenter. And hopefully a lot of people on a planetary level, we've all been able to have like this national reset together, you know, and um, mm. yeah. So, okay, let's continue. So did you want to <laughs> exact? Um, elaborate more on food and um, or what did you want so, to about? yeah I mean we kind of are kind of all over the place which is okay um, so one thing you know because we were talking about the arrows how actually for you a set routine might not work and that's okay right you know the spiritual circles were like oh you have to have a morning routine and all that but for some mm. people for inconsistent people that doesn't work right um, and you're actually, you know, we're also taught that we have to know what we want and we have to go get it. But you're actually a non-specific and a non-strategic person, which means you want to be more general about what you want to manifest. It's more of like an open palm instead of like a grabby energy, <laughs> you know, like I need to get this. Um, yeah. So it's, it's the new world way of manifesting where you just focus on how you want to feel and the next right action. You don't have to have a five-year plan as everyone tells you, you need a five-year plan and you, know, you need to know what you want and be specific. Like, actually, we're both non-specific. So I know the pain because people have told me, they're like, well, if you don't know what you want, you're never going to accomplish anything. <laughs> And then they make and you feel bad. I know. You question I know. yourself. And it's like, who are they to tell, project and tell you what you should be doing? Like they're the almighty God or something, right? I mean, they're probably specific. So that works right. for them. But that's yeah. again, like, you know, recognizing and knowing other people's designs can just help you release that judgment and be like, this is why they're acting this way. And that's okay. That's right for them. Um, and then letting people know about your design too, so they can know how to interact with you better as well. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's dive mm -hmm. in with um, the reflector, which is the rarest of them all. What are some tips and things you can talk about uh, the reflectors out there? Who are they? How can we find them? So the reflectors, um, you know, they're very, very sensitive to their environment. So it's really important for them to be in the right environment. And actually, like, you know, the general wisdom is like kind of you need to for the rest of the types, 99% of the world is like, you kind of need to figure out who you are. But reflectors don't have like a set identity um, in a way that with, if they're with funny people, they'll express like their funny side. So they're kind of like they're kind of chameleons that are always adapting to the environment. 
Um, and they, they really belong at the center of the tribe and they reflect um, the health of the collective and how the collective is doing, really. So, Who are um, a couple of um, reflectors in the world? So, well, Michael Jackson was one. Um, and, and I don't know if you know Teal Swan. She's one. Of course. Um, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the Balanced Blonde, if you follow her, she's a reflector. I um, can't remember now. But yeah, those are a few. Um, so yeah. percent Because when I did my studies, it's been a while. I thought it was 5%. Oh, well, I thought it was, they're very rare anyway, but yeah, um, rare, they're the rare, rarest, yeah. rarest, rarest of the types. And I actually like, you know, they don't have any centers defined, so they don't have like an authority. Um, like we do, we have like a certain center defined and that's our authority and that's how, you know, we're supposed to make decisions. So for them each, so the rest of us are actually solar beings and they are lunar beings. So each 28 day um, period for them is, it's kind of like a lifetime. So for really important decisions, they're supposed to actually wait a lunar cycle, like 28 days. So wow, wow. Um, obviously my not friend, for, <laughs> yeah. Uh, my friend, um, Elijah Sokolow, um, he's a musician, independent musician. So cool. He has a band called the living strange and he was telling me his theory and how he'll put on like one cap and he, that's his focus and that's all he'll think about. And then he does the next project and that's all he thinks about. And then he moves on to the next one. I wonder if he's a reflector. Yeah, it could be. Or, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to predict. He could be a manifesting generator, just like changing directions too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you never know. Um, yeah. So speaking yeah. about, man we've, we've mentioned Manifesto Generators, you're one, Nikki Scorpio's one. Uh, tell us m uh, more in depth about some um, brush strokes of Manifesto Generators. Um, so yeah, I know like Jessica Alba, Tony Robbins are some, but um, Manifesting Generators, so they're kind of, you know, a hybrid between the Manifestor and the Generator. So the Manifesting part is very like spontaneous and urge-based and it's like, um, yeah, you get like these urges and you have to follow them. And, and it's very quick energy, the manifesting energy. And the generator part is a little slower. It's governed by the sacral. Um, so manifesting generators kind of have two speeds within them. So like, you know, someone asks you if you want to do something in like a month and, and the manifestor part will get excited about it and be like, okay, yes. But then, you know, like as the the month um, goes on, the generator part, the sacral might be like, oh, I'm actually not that excited about it. So for manifesting generators, it's really important not to like lock ourselves into like long-term plans. It's all about freedom. Our path is not conventional. We, you know, we change directions many times um, throughout our lives. And we often like have so many passions and so many a different interests and we need to pursue all of them and you know and the universe helps us out by giving us um by helping us get really good at things quickly because we're so we're supposed to do so many things so we have like a uh, you know if i were to learn guitar i'd probably you know pick it up really quickly but i'm not supposed to be like you know the best guitarist ever like I'm here to use that skill maybe of learning guitar and do something else with it and combine it with all my other interests. Love so we're that. really here as like, you know, showing the world what's possible, being also just light and playful and, and, um, and yeah, we're here to kind of um, lift us out of the heavy and hard and be kind of visionaries. I mean, each energy type is a visionary in its own way, but uh, but yeah, that's a little bit about manifesting generators. <laughs> cool. And then my sister, Anna Chinakis, that I mentioned earlier, which led me to you, um, she is a genius and she is a full-blown generator. So she's a genius, as I just said, but she researches, she like Google, she'll get all the information and then she like presents it to a manifesto generator or, or a projector. So talk about more of a, a generator. So... And actually, I want to talk about that 
the thing you mentioned with the research, because that's another part of your chart that I want to talk about. But first, generators. So generators um, are really here. They're like people, people, they're here to uplift the world. But, you know, the, they have a lot of like past karma that they have to sacrifice in order to uplift mm. the world. But mm. really, the new way of doing things is, is kind of freeing the generator to just follow their own desires. And when they do what they're excited about, um, that's when they uplift the world. So it's like really the generator has to learn to be selfish because for so many centuries they were you know, considered the worker bees and were taken advantage of by manifestors. So, so there's a lot of heavy karma there. So they have to establish um, those boundaries. But like really when a generator is doing what they're excited about, they're just like so sparkly, so juicy and everyone wants to be around them. And they have a really enveloping aura and a very inviting aura. So mm, cool. So, I yeah. think I'm going to um, connect you and my sister on an email and uh, you guys go mm -hmm. in depth with her chart. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, and actually, so I wanted to talk a little bit about profile because that's another part of your chart that's kind of about. So the first first thing that's the most important thing to learn about is your energy type, then it's authority, and then third is profile. So the profile is kind of like personality, but also archetype. Mm -hmm. So for you, um, you're a one three profile, um, which you know Jenna Zoe calls the establisher of knowledge, knowledge and truth. So the one, so we each person has two numbers in their profile. So for you, it's a one and a three. And the smaller number is first, which means that you have kind of more personal karma. So you're meant to be um, finding your worth through looking inwards and like realizing your, your worth. So I also have the first number smaller, which means that we're here to create karma. Um, cool. And, you know, as a projector, you, you're not really aware of, um, you know, how people see you. And actually, the one three profile, because the first number is, is smaller, you you might not be sure about how you come across. So yeah, um, so I've not had that along the way. Mm. Like I'll just be maybe me, and people are just like, like sometimes <laughs> their eyes are bigger. They're like, is she for real? Like is she serious? You know, because they're, they're like, um, you know, like Nikki calls me like a. Uh, Carol Burnett or like Lucille Ball, like, you know, like this empowering woman who marches to the beat of her own drum and really sarcastic and dry, but everything positive, like, you know, but some people are just like, she's like a living cartoon character, like a lot, you know, she sounds like a cartoon, acts like a cartoon, looks like a cartoon. So, so yeah, I've, I've, I've had to become more aware and was really strict on myself but then becoming more comfortable with myself is just like, you know, I am who I am. You find your tribe. Mm. If you're mm. too loud, if you're too loud for people, they're not your people. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, but go ahead. So the one is kind of how you see yourself. The one like likes to get to the bottom of things, like learns by understanding, like wanting to know the full scope of things, like being really prepared and, and, feels good with like knowledge and facts and, and likes to study. Um, just and unjust. You know, <laughs> my, um, my, um, I learned my moon. I think my moon, I'm a Scorpio, Libra, Sagittarius. I think my moon's a Sagittarius or I don't know, or maybe my moon is anyways, but I'm like the balancer. So it's like, I'll think about something, I'll see something and I'll hear every, every single story like you said, the bird in the tree and I'm observing like everyone else, that's what I'll do. I'll like observe everything, but then not only will I observe everything and on an intellectual level, like in an intelligent, like understanding, but then in an, but then with empathy and on an emotional level, I'll be able to hear all sides and then come to like a balanced choice of it being just or unjust. Mm -hmm. And for me mm -hmm. at my heart center, that's what it's about. It's not who I like more or who I don't like more. It's just about the balance of just and unjust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that fits in with your profile. So, so one is really how you're, how you see yourself. So there are six numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So the one is all about like learning knowledge, um, 
the two is kind of like naturally gifted in a way. I mean, obviously there's a lot more to the numbers, but the three learns by experience. So that's actually your second number. So how people see you is like you're, um, you're kind of brave. Like you are naturally not afraid of failure. Like you're, your you know, your life is kind of like ups and downs and, and making mistakes, although they're just lessons really. Um, so, um, so the three is all about like focusing on the lessons, what you're learning and speaking the truth about what works and what doesn't, because you've experienced it and learned those lessons through your mm -hmm. trial and error process. So when those two come together, you're the establisher of knowledge and truth. So you're kind of like always looking for um for the next truth but as you as you carry out your trial and error process you get to like better and better truths so it's like not like you'll arrive at one truth you'll just you know you'll always be searching for the next one like evolving so. to the deep yeah truth. exactly and, exactly yeah. and um so yeah like knowing that that truth will change and and that's okay and it'll evolve and and yeah you're very spiritual spiritually curious like naturally skeptical and um and and yeah the birthday's the 11 11 one 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 so, oh wow yeah, <laughs> um happy spiritual <laughs> yeah. um so so yeah this the the self discovery process is just really important for you and you formulate it into a system um and and yeah you you just question everything which which is well it's a good thing i guess you know in human design we don't say good thing or a bad thing everything yeah. is a good thing <laughs> but oh yeah Go well, ahead. I was taught, I was taught like, well, curiosity is the number one emotion, which is my favorite emotion. And I was taught like, um, like, you know, when a baby's born, it's all hypnosis, right? It's based on what we see. And around seven or eight years old, the brain actually starts to develop. And so I just remembered being like really, really young and uh, making the choice that if I didn't know something or if I was curious just to ask, because that a lot, a lot of times when you're young, you're told no, no, no. And then people hide and then they're scared to ask something if they don't know, cause they're going to feel embarrassed about looking stupid. So sometimes I was like the class clown. Cause I would like ask something and people would ha ha make fun of me, but it was like, yo, I rather know than not know if I don't know. And like, I rather just ask. So like, so I feel like even though like your brain is liquid until you're about Bruce Lipton, Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about this, but I guess your brain is liquid until you're about seven or eight and then the brain actually starts to develop. So yeah, I think the part of being curious and just asking is kind of keeping fluid and in flow with, with that curiosity mm. and the mm. bravery that you mentioned to, to be able to yeah Say, hey and everyone look at you and you're like oh, <laughs> and then you're like yeah that was me that just said that <laughs> yeah and sharing like you know the outcomes not only things that work but also things that like maybe didn't go the way and that's like i'm still i have a three in my profile my three comes first like i'm a three five but i know like you know, you don't want to share the things that didn't work, but I'm like, that's also important because it's part of the learning and, and mm -hmm. you go through that trial and error process and not everyone goes through that. So you want to be able to, to tell people about that. <laughs> not everyone is as brave as the threes. So yeah, we need so to we... have the uncomfortable conversations. I mean, that's what thankfully a lot of people have been screaming and shouting out in 2020 mm -hmm. is we need to be able to break the old stigmas and and break the barriers and the concrete of the junk and sit and and be and have uncomfortable conversations and not not project in a negative way not blame or shame someone because of something that's going on but be able to have those un uncomfortable conversations and have respect to hear mm -hmm. all sides and and be in the uncomfortability of of it all that's how we're going to shape shift this energy right mm. Yeah, I love that. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention that I'm obsessed about that I thought it was really cool about your chart because I haven't seen that. So it's the environment that we thrive in. So for you, it's kitchens. I mean, not, I mean, it can be literally kitchens, but it's just 
in places that are creative, like where people can commune and you can create something new or, or alchemize something or there's a lot of action or it's like a studio, something that invokes creativity in you. So I thought that was really an interesting part of your chart too. Love um, to hear that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing um, that with me. Thank you so much. <laughs> which is funny because I'm caves, so I love to be at home. Not like literal caves, but I, I enjoy being um, at home or or in social contexts that I'm that I have some control over. So I think that's like a really cool part of human design that you can yeah. like know which environments you you thrive in. Well, and, I was in Cuba, and there were some really cool caves there. And I know in New Mexico, there's some like really epic caves. So in the world, you can actually go to real life caves as well. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So for, you know, like in our current context, it's mostly people who love to be home or kind of in control more of their, um, of like the social. So I like to, you know, have, I don't like huge groups. I like one-on-one -on -one interaction. So that's how I manage my, my caves um, environment. But, but yeah, like it, you know, human design can also tell you about your strongest sense. So for you, for example, it's touch. For me, it's smell. So it's, you know, that's kind of um, can offer more, you know, kind of intuitive guidance and uh, in your, your strongest sense. And, um, and, you know, you also can learn about your purpose or your theme or your um, karma in this life. So for you, you have like a knowing that's very revolutionary and and um and it's all about also providing an explanation for your knowing like you um so it's not always an easy task because you have a very individual knowing and as others are trying to understand what you know you might just want to be like well i just know because i know um but you you continue to try to like get that information across and keep um, trying to get others to um, to kind of understand um, what what your um, what your genius is about, really. Um, so I receive this. Thank you. I receive this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you actually, and then there's a whole another layer of like the gates and channels, and you have this channel that's called the genius freak. So you're kind of ahead of your time and. The people that get you will see you as a genius and you have to see yourself as a genius. Um, and, you know, things are just kind of obvious to you that are not obvious to others. And some people won't get you and that's okay. And I'm, I apologize. The lighting is a little weird because <laughs> it's getting dark here. No, and it's I totally, fine. Um, it's totally fine. But, but I'll just keep going. And, and yeah, you have just this, these unique opinions and insight and you also... Um, and you have a specific way of seeing things and the ability of communicating it. So explaining it in kind of a, um, an obvious way or making things obvious to other people. So that's really cool. And, and yeah, you also, I, yeah, sorry. go I, ahead. I, may I, okay. Yeah. I've always yeah. felt like I've been ahead of my time. I've always known, knowing that I've been ahead of my time. It was like, when I was little, I was like, yo, when is there going to be wireless everything? I was like, you know, like, when are people going to catch up? Like I would say things and do things. And it's like, ah, it's like, it was like, I was always be ahead of my time. Like I always knew things, but along the way, even though when you know, you know what you know, that you know, that you know, it's, it's still challenging because like the other people who don't know, and then you're out there in the battle of the people. And then you face people and you have to go through the systems of society and, and this and this. And even though you already know things, you don't want to be so egotistical or thinking like, you know, everything, but it was also just like, it's like an uphill battle and disgusting and like hard along the way, you know? So sometimes it's like, that's why I traveled the world and went to so many different places and met with so many different people, just not to be in the same system with the same repetition, because that will just boggle you down, 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 down and put out your fire and your spirit. So that's why I just met friends all around the world and just travel and just kept like the energy moving and in flow and, and, and involved in different kinds of, you know, scenarios, people, cultures, and places just for that very reason, mm. you know? And so mm. now I've been able to like kind of root down in a, in a level where it's like, I feel like the world has caught up, you know, in some areas I feel like, you know, I don't know, that's a whole nother area. So won't go there, but moving, <laughs> moving right along. 
you were saying? So yeah, I wanted to just mention a few more of your gates and channels. So you have like a love of logic, fear of chaos, which is like, you know, helping others dispel chaos, putting, getting a system in order, uh, figuring out a system. Um, so that's an important part of your chart. And you're also really good at listening and collecting stories. And so people like naturally open up to you and, um, and, you know, and you kind of gather all that information um, that you receive from others and you process the information that we've learned as a collective. And it's um, sacred and it's loyal and people can trust me with that and I don't abuse it and I honor it and I, I use it for the collective whole of the macro experience. Yes, totally. You, you're here to tell stories. You're here to turn stories into wisdom and um, and you have a lot of also altruism in your chart. So just wanting to improve the spiritual well-being of the planet. And, um, you know, obviously each, each gate and channel can have like a negative or like a low expression, which, you know, that can be a little codependent. But, you know, in the high expression, you're you're really here to be altruistic and you know, and you're also here to amplify what is good in others. And it's not something that you have to work hard at. It's kind of comes effortlessly to you. Mm -hmm. um, it really does. It really does. It's like, I, I mm -hmm. see you, I honor you and it's a mirror reflection. So it's, it's natural, you know? So I like to always honor and embrace those things that I feel and that I see with individuals. I think it's important, you know, cause like, you know, there's quotes and there's sayings, like you say one thing, something to someone or if you're smiling hey nice sweater or beautiful smile you touch their lives you touch their spirit and their soul and they're going to remember you the whole entire day you might just make them shift them from a negative to a positive or for the mm. week or the month or for a lifetime they remember and you connect with their soul mm. Yeah, I mean, you just kind of naturally make people more successful. So it's not like you always have to you know, focus on your own success. And actually that's like the signature um, feeling that or thing that shows up when you're living your design as a projector is success. And when you're not, when you're not waiting for the invitations, you feel bitterness. But anyways, but basically you, um, you know, you, you just make others more successful as you interact with them. So that's, amazing and um and you're also like kind of you have a lot of like the army leader um energy which is like you know you understand people's capabilities and limitations and you you know who is good at what in a group just like organizing things and and it's not like you know you want to resist seeing yourself as above people but just knowing that you're meant to be like a strong leader and but also um, you have like the, the attunement to intimacy. So, well, on, on the, I guess, low expression side, it's, it's like fear of intimacy and on the high expression side, it's like attunement to intimacy. So, so in the low expression side, it's like, oh, everyone's se separate from me. It's not safe to bond with people. But on the kind of high expression side, it's like, you know how to foster closeness with people and that really comes easily to you. So. I've experienced so. both in depth and uh, the the positive one and not knowing what I know, but knowing and then the negative one and then being attached to it and not understanding and not not knowing how to break free of it and then understanding it and then choosing to be with the higher one instead of the lower one. So mm -hmm. it's a balance and it's definitely an awareness and experience that I can reflect on. And yeah, you're also here to help um, others fall in love with their lives. And, um, and first you obviously, um, you know, fall in love with your life and then you help others. And you also have a lot of like um, love of the physical self and its power. So, you know, like you're here to learn to love your physical self over the course of your life feeling into the pot of your body and and then you help others master it as well and um so facilitating that that love for the body for others um 
And yeah, what else, what else do I want to mention in terms of your gates and channels? I mean, that's really where like your, your superpowers are for me. Um, and you know, you're here to kind of, um, think on your feet and realize like the present moment contains gifts like being present and letting your intuitive impulses like kind of wisdom um, from your body to guide your behaviors moment by moment um, and and there are a few fears because of your defined spleen that's where the fears live so you have some fear of the future which is kind of like might be you know, planning a lot and controlling and rehearsing on the low expression side. Um, but on the high expression side, you see what's coming, you see what, what no one else might see. So, and, you know, you have a fear of running out of time. That's low expression and high expression is a good sense of timing. So you might always be like in a hurry um, and like, we don't have time to sit around and do nothing. And you kind of might be um, rushing a lot, but like also knowing that you have that sense of divine timing. Um, and you have some fear of authority, which is about putting other people on pedestals um, and creating kind of separation between yourself and people. But on the positive side, it's like, um, you're here to become an authority in your own life and help others become an authority as well. Um, and the last fear, you have some fear of inadequacy. So like, you know, that you're not qualified enough or, or concerned with developing skills you might lack. Um, that's like on the low expression side and on the high expression side, you know what is missing or what is needed to make something work. So. Um, so that's a little bit uh, about that. Um, and I think we, we like covered a lot, um, yeah, <laughs> a lot definitely. of it. I'm so, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. You just made my month. It's my birthday month. So this has just been <laughs> such a tree and uh, I'm just going to take it deep within my soul and I'm going to reflect. I'm going to pray. I'm going to journal. I'm going to do some writing. I'm going to like take a bath with, you know, some Epsom salts and just take some magnesium to put minerals inside my body and just maybe light a candle and, you know, just do like a little ritual to close this session and just, you know, be in gratitude of this moment and, and carry it with me uh, through the rest of 2020 and, and, and into a tw uh, strong 2021. And um, I think people are really going to gain a lot of insight and value from hearing and seeing this episode. So, um, yeah, I'll have all your information in the show notes. If you want to let everyone know again, that would be really cool. And they can reach out to you directly and uh, say they found you from She's All Over the Place podcast. Maybe you can offer them like a 5 or 10% discount or something like that. That would be really neat and mm -hmm. harmonious. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Sonia Patetska, S-O-N-I-A-P-E-T-E-C-K-A. And the same, um, my website's just my first name, lastname.com. So we'll have that in the show notes and um, definitely reach out to me for, for a discount um, if you mention the podcast. Um, um, yeah, we'll work something out. So <laughs> Yeah, and the other thing is... Um, so uh, Sonia can do your human design in depth and she can do your human design. However, you can also go and do your human design for free. There's the Jehovian website. What's the website? So people can actually go and do their human design, know what they are, check out some forms or whatever, and right. then contact you and say, hey, I'm a generator, manifestor generator. I heard the podcast, found out what my uh, design was, and I would like to get an in-depth session with you coaching this and that. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the website exactly? So I use um, mybodygraph.com. Yeah, so, mybodygraph.com. Okay, and I'll have yeah, that that's, in the show notes as well. So you can um, do your human design for free there, yeah. but then have an in-depth chart with someone like Sonia. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, and now, you know, I, I offer, like, as I mentioned, I, I offer the support after the human design reading so people can ask me questions, and I can also support them in implementing this 
I did not plan. I forgot that it got dark so early now. <laughs> it's like so dark. Um, yeah, but I didn't, didn't want to move to to turn on the light. But anyways. Um. <laughs> Most people will be hearing it audio anyway. Right. Yeah, just in the podcast movement, um, 10-day conference. And um, the top 200 podcasts. So they say like um, podcast videoing is like it's beneficial, more helping. It's not. The, it's a myth because the top 200 podcasts out of all the podcasts out there, 1.5 million, uh, the top 200 do not have video. So most of the people okay. will hear on audio. However, <laughs> this is just an added perk that I put on my YouTube channel, The Sophisticated Psycho. So if you want to see this in a video format, um, just go to The Sophisticated Psycho's uh, YouTube channel and uh, yeah, see the episode of Sonia and me and the human design on She's All Over the Place and uh, all her information will be there as well. Cool, cool. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, this was really a great conversation and, um, and yeah, look forward to talking again soon. You, you've obviously done a lot of, um, personal growth and, and spiritual work. So it, it really shows and, um, and you are living your design, um, in so many ways. So I just want to recognize you because yeah, that takes a lot of, um, dedication. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Two things, two things. So, um, uh, evolving wisdom. It was um, with the woman who created um, the the human potential, and um, you know I'm a big fan of hers. And she was saying people like you and me were the midwives. We're the midwives. We're we're like allowing people to be on our journey to share our experience, what we have thus far, and we're being the midwife for people on their spiritual path and and just living you know, as human beings, right, through our human design, and um, so I, I love that about us, go us, and then the other thing is, something came to me, it was like, I know it's kind of forward to say this, but something came to me, it was like not too long ago, I don't know, months ago, within the last year, um, so uh, Socrates, his uh, definition of a philosopher is a person who is a lover, a seeker of wisdom. And I've been that ever since I'm a kid and I'm Greek, um, you know, Greek Orthodox Christian. And just within this last year, it was um, brought to my attention, like I'm Socrates' sister. So like you are talking to Socrates' sister. What's up? Kiyaki <laughs> is my name. I'm named after the saint, St. Kiyaki. It means Sunday, God's day in, in Greek. And I'm named after my yaya. She's my best friend, bestest friend in the whole world. She just turned mm-hmm. 91. And yeah, so I just think it's cool. Like my tribe, my vibe is Socrates. And like, I'm his sister, younger sister, obviously. (laughs) Yeah, cool. All right. Well, I totally appreciate you. And everyone reach out to Sonia and uh, subscribe and um, leave a comment. And um, yeah, learn about your human design. And uh, if you have children, definitely have your children Mm. do their human design. And if you have a partner, have them do their human designs. And then we can understand each other a bit more. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the children thing, it's like, it's so important, especially for three. Like if you have a three in your profile, like letting your child know that, you know, it's okay to make a mistake and focus on that learning. Like, I mean, there are a lot of things, but yeah, knowing, knowing about your child's human yeah. design and I'm like I feel like um yeah you're just like a much better parent <laughs> I, don't, I don't have uh, children yet but thank god I know well, this is one of the reasons why I don't have children yet I wanted to wait later on so I could like mm. learn so much and then bring a child into the world because you know those parents who like bring children into the world and then they project everything onto their children and they're still kids and they don't know and it's like a big mess so it's like I wanted to fully like experience the world the universe and God's grace have a career and then learn as much as I po- possibly can and appreciate the fact that I'm here and fill my cup fully, totally overfilling mm-hmm. and then be able to have a child. And now, now I know about the human design. I can, you know, definitely God willing, one day I have children, I'm able to share this with them. Mm, yeah, no, I, I have felt the same about, you know, I, I still don't have children. Um, but I, you know, I, I guess my, my, parents this is vulnerable to share but my parents were totally on like clueless about what they were doing so I was like okay if I have a child I need to like you know yeah exactly not come from that like um 
burden energy like the child is a burden but really you know like this is like i am so excited to have a child and and um and really coming from that overflowing kind of state where uh, you know i'm just so excited to um to share whatever i have with the child so anyway we got we got yeah distracted well, by of, yeah well speaking yeah. of sharing um I would love to, in the near future, um, you know, have you back on. She's all over the place if you're up for it. So yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, there's so much more to talk about. <laughs> okay. So yeah, yeah. Well, let's digest process, <laughs> live life, and then uh, we'll, we'll tune in again with one another. Okay. I promise I'll have better lighting. <laughs> Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.